I've learned that real storms don't dictate who you are. They define. Look at somebody say, don't you get this thing twisted. Don't, don't get it twisted. I ain't praising them because of where I am. I'm praising them because where I'm going is better than where I am right now. This is PowerCast with PC. Well, good morning to each and every one of you. This is certainly the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We say good morning uh, to each and every one of you. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. It is Friday. It is Friday, y'all, and we are excited about uh, all that God has done for us this week and and, uh, graciously looking forward to uh, what we know he's going to do for us. Uh, going into this weekend. It's Pentecost uh, weekend, and uh, for uh, those of us who are uh, of the Pentecostal persuasion, we believe it to be the, uh, well, we know it to be the birth of the Christian church, and so we are excited about uh, that celebration of this weekend, the coming of the Holy Spirit, and all of that good stuff, but we're just grateful to be alive today. Anybody Glad to be alive. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. Good morning. Happy Friday. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning and good morning. I'm excited about this morning. Looking forward to sharing with you this morning what God has given us and uh Pray that you're ready to receive it. Uh, Won't you share this video uh, before we really jump in? Uh, Let's get our shares up. Let's let people know about what we're doing every morning, Monday through Friday uh, at 7 o'clock a.m. And also just a reminder, if you are into podcasts, you can go to Powercast with PC on Apple Podcasts or your Google Play Podcast. And you can download our podcast and be a part of it. Uh, everything that we share here is on our podcast and I'm getting ready to start doing some stuff that'll be specific just for our podcast as well on top of all of the other things that we're doing there. Of course, go to YouTube. If you're on YouTube, youtube youtube.com backslash pastor Chris Hines, and you can like our YouTube page. Also, um, we're on Instagram. We're on TikTok. We're on uh, Twitter. Uh, at Chris Hines. We're on all social media. So follow us there, find us there. And then of course we come on local television here in the Hampton Roads area. If you're local, WSKY TV channel four Sundays at 5 a.m. Mondays at 5 30 a.m. So you can set your DVR there. We are uh, trying to be everywhere uh, so that we can spread the good news that uh, because of Jesus, that we have abundant life. So I'm excited about it. Got an amazing conference coming up very, very soon. Increase 2020. Feeling real good about it. Feeling good about our guests. And uh, so we want you to go to uh, www.clhines.org and get registered uh, for that conference. We want you to get registered for it. And um, it's absolutely free for you to register. You can go to www.clhines.org. So we say good morning to you. Let me go to my comments real quick and say good morning to a few of you. Good morning. Good morning, uh, Deborah. Good morning, Portia. Good morning, Sister Carter. Good morning, Brother Eugene. Good morning, Sister Costella. Good morning, uh, Sister Tanisha. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. I pray everyone is having a good morning this morning. Let's go to Genesis chapter 17, verse one through five. This thing is on me heavy this morning. And uh, we've been talking about the kingdom and the kingdom, not from just a doing perspective, but the kingdom from a being perspective. And go ahead, go ahead and type in. Go ahead and type in, I am the kingdom. I am the kingdom. Go ahead and type that in this morning. We say good morning to those of you who are with us on our conference call line this morning. Good morning to you. 
Go ahead, type that in. I am the kingdom. I am the kingdom. The kingdom of God is the uh, kingdom that Jesus came to establish. And the kingdom of God has the power of God, the resources of God, the strength of God, the ability of God. All of that is in the kingdom. The kingdom is a spiritual kingdom. Therefore, the, the kingdom of God is within us. It's within us. So that means you've got all of that on the inside of you. When you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have all of that on the inside of you. And I need you to know that this is not a religious thing that I'm talking about. That Jesus did not come to establish a religion. Jesus came to establish a relationship. He wants you to have a relationship. Uh, and your relationship may drive religion, but your religion will never drive relationship. Amen. And so I need you to know that the kingdom of God is within. Go ahead and type that in. The kingdom of God is within. And if you haven't, you need to just go from Monday. You need to go to my videos from Monday, my, my teachings from Monday all the way up today so I can get you caught up to where we are. Because if not, you might get lost in a little bit of what I'm going to share this morning. So when you come into the kingdom of God, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, the Bible says that Jesus took on poverty that we might be rich. Meaning that we are rich in our being. So we are rich spiritually. We are a spirit. We have a soul when we live in our bodies. Spirit, soul, body. Sp our soul is our mind, our will, and our emotions. Our spirit is our being. <clears throat> That's why when we die, according to scripture, our flesh stays here and decays because our body is not who we are. Our body is just the shell that we're living in right now. But who we are lives on in heaven or hell eternally because we are a spirit. We are eternal. This is temporal. Our flesh is eternal. Our carnality is, is temporal. Our humanity is temporal, but our, our spirit is eternal. And so in our being who we are, we are rich. The problem is, as we try to live it out, we've got to live it out through our carnality. We've got to live it out through our humanity. We've got to live it out through our flesh. So that creates a duality. According to scripture, when I would do good, evil is always present. It's always present. And I would even go further to say not only is evil always present, but it is always prevalent. So even when we want to do the right things, there is still this battle within our flesh. We don't I don't think anybody seeks to do wrong or seeks to do bad. It's, it's just it's a part of our nature because of sin. According to what Adam and Eve did. We now have we've had in our flesh a sin nature. When we receive Christ now, we have we we are restored back to our original nature. And so uh, as a result of that, because the kingdom of God is intertwined and interwoven in our being. We, we've got to start tapping into our being. Our being is the part of our minds, souls, hearts. That has nowhere to go, nothing to do. It is fully present. It is fully aware in the present. All right. So look at it like this. Your being is what is who you are when you're just sitting with yourself, sitting quietly. How, how often do you sit quietly? And how often do you sit with your thoughts long enough for thoughts to pass through? OK, so I'll give you an example of that. What about. Somebody does you wrong and you want to cuss them out and the thought to cuss them out is there. How long do you sit with your thought and the thought of cussing them out stays with you, but you let it stay with you long enough for it to go away? Now, watch this. The longer it takes for that thought to go away can be can be a indicator, not a dictator, but can be an indicator of how in tune you are with your being. Because those thoughts are not, they, they are to come because we're human, but they are not to stay because we're spiritual. How long do you have thoughts of positive things, going to start businesses, going to be blessed, all of that kind of stuff? And how long do you allow those thoughts to stay? Because the Bible says, think on that which is good, that which is pleasant, that which is honorable. Think on these things, so forth and so on. And so those thoughts are the thoughts that are supposed to stay with us. 
And so we're supposed to sit with ourselves. We're supposed to be in our being according to Acts chapter 17. I believe it's verse 28 or verse 38. I can't remember exactly, but you know, the scripture says it's in him that I live, move and have our being. What we try to do is live and move, but we don't have our being. If you don't have your being in him, then your living and your moving will be off. It'll be wrong. Are y'all with me this morning? I know I'm just trying to catch up some of us that may not have been with us. So it's important for him to be in your being. So watch this now. Once you come into this understanding of what I'm teaching and this knowledge of what I'm teaching, then now you understand how significant your faith is because you are to release your faith in the kingdom. You are to release your faith in the kingdom. Your faith is in the kingdom. Your faith is not in your ability. Your faith is in the kingdom. Now, the kingdom is a partnership, is stewardship, is God's resources under your authority. So this is why when we don't have what we in the kingdom, we don't get what we earn. We get what we can be trusted with because it's a stewardship thing. The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, and they that dwell therein. So it's not about me doing it to earn it. It's about me doing it to be trusted with it. God will give me whatever I can be trusted with. Yes, you can go and earn. You don't need God to earn. You're made in his image. You're made in his likeness. You can go get a job. You can go get a check. You can go do your thing. Go ahead and do your thing. Just know that doing your thing is limited as opposed to what God has for us. What do you mean? Well, the Bible says that uh, what God has for us, uh, he wants to give us the desires of our heart. That implies that we can't produce the desires of our heart, not without him, not without him. So we need the supernatural faith, supernatural, our natural, his super, him putting his backing, his favor, his grace, his mercy, his kingdom, He's him putting all of that on our ability. Are you with me? That's why now faith, according to Hebrews chapter 11, verse one, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So faith without works is dead. So we need works. We just don't need works without faith. We need our faith. So the question is, what do we put our faith in? We put our faith in the kingdom. Well, where is the kingdom? The kingdom is in us. The problem is you can't skip the process or skip steps. So it's not about just having faith in yourself because faith in yourself without God is meaningless. It's about having faith in God and knowing that God's kingdom is in you to produce. I want you to type in God's kingdom is in me to produce. Come on with me this morning. God's kingdom is in me to produce. God's kingdom is in me to produce. It's Friday, y'all. Let's let's go at it. Let's go ahead and get it this morning. God's kingdom is in you to produce. You're going to produce today. Whatever dreams, whatever aspirations, whatever inspirations, whatever things that you know God has put in your heart, you know you didn't put them in there yourself. You know that dream is too big for you. You know that vision is too big for you. You know it's too big for you. That's all right. You don't have to do it by yourself. God is going to work that thing out, not just for you, but through you and in you. But it's got to work it out in you. It's got to get in your being. When something is in your being, then it will drive your living and your and your moving. There are some people who are, I use this for an example. There are some people who who teaching is in their being. If they're in a classroom, they're teaching. If they're not in a classroom, they're teaching. If you say good morning, it winds up they're teaching. They always have a lesson. They're always teaching because they are teachers. Teaching is in their being. Y'all not hearing me. And so the question then becomes, well, if I'm a, if I'm going to be a teacher, well, how can I be rich? Well, what if God has an innovative way for you to teach because he's not limiting you to a school system? So you're not limited to the check of the school system that God has an idea. He has an innovative way. He's got a creative way that he wants to give you that when you work that idea, when you work that dream, when you work that vision, not only will it give you substantial wealth, but it will allow you to be who he has called you to be. That's just an example. So the kingdom of God, one of the benefits of the kingdom is, 
uh, let me say it to you like this. So we got to get it in our being. And once we get it in our being, then what we do is we release our faith. As we release our faith, our faith needs a point of contact. Your faith has to have a point of contact. Why? Because one of the great weapons of manifestation Manifestation meaning to bring into fruition, to bring from the unseen world to the seen world, to bring from the uh, idea to to tang tangibility is focus. So you need a point of contact because you need a point to focus on. What do you mean by that? I mean, the Bible says that the woman with the issue of blood for 12 years said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment. Now, the Bible says she touched the hem of his garment and then she was made whole. But watch this. She did not get healed because there was power in the hem of his garment. We, you, she could have touched someone else's garment. She got healed because she made that hem her point of contact. She had a point of contact. You need a point of contact. So... Focus. Type in focus. Everybody type in focus. Focus. I want to give you something to focus on today. I'm going to give you something to focus on today. And I'm going to give you a point of contact today. So Genesis chapter 17 is where we are. Watch this. It says, when Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am El Shaddai, God Almighty. Serve me faithfully and live a blameless life. And I will make a covenant with you by which I will guarantee to give you countless descendants. Now, I want you to look at the facts here. I want you to look at the facts. Because Abram is 99 years old. And God is talking to him about his future. And God wants Abram to know that what I am about to use you to do in your future is humanly impossible. But remember what the scripture says, with man, things are, are impossible, but with God, all things are possible. So I'm not asking you to do it yourself. I'm telling you that when God releases his word, his word is what moves the kingdom. Remember, the kingdom is the ability of God, is the resources of God, is the strength of God, is all of that. So when God speaks, that word has the ability to transform, that word has the ability to produce, that word has the ability to manifest, that word, that word, that word, that word. That's why when you speak words, they're powerful. Jesus said, my words are spirit and life. Hebrews chapter 11, verse three says, and we know that by faith, the word, the world was framed by God's word. Words are not just for communication. Words are for creation. You have what you say. The power of life and death is in the tongue. That's why um, we, we're so... Uh, adamant about you speaking positive because as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Your heart is going to manifest what it hears. Your heart is the soil for which produces the manifestation of your words. And because we are uh, so in tune with our carnality or our sin nature because of our flesh, then we usually manifest our negative words much easier than we do our positive words because the positive words are new to us. They're new to our nature. We're not used to them. We're not, we're uncomfortable in them. We, we've got to learn how to grow and be comfortable in them. So he's got to talk to us because generally when God speaks to us, he's talking to Abram and not Abraham. What do you mean by that? I mean that when we come into the kingdom of God, God always changes our name. You need a new name for your new nature. And I don't mean that literally, but I'm talking about it figuratively. Of course, in scripture, uh, this happened literally, but I'm talking to you figuratively. I'm not telling you to go downtown and change your name. And if you feel led to do that, that's that's between you and God. I'm talking about you understanding that the things you used to do, you can no longer go by that name. You can no longer go by that identity. You can no no longer accept that as a part of your being. You're no longer Abram, you're Abraham. Abram would not be able, listen, Abram could not even have a child. Abram couldn't have a child. 
And yet God gives him a word that I'm going to make you a father of many nations. So Abram, how can I get you to focus on what I'm teaching you? Abram, how can I get you to focus on what I'm telling you? How can I get you to set your mind, set your mind on things above? I got to change your name. And I'm not going to name you something that doesn't go with my word. So I'm going to name you something. Watch this. That means father of many nations. I wish I was with me this morning. It says, I am El Shaddai, God almighty. Serve me faithfully and live a blameless life. I will make a covenant with you by which I will guarantee to give you countless, countless descendants. And at this verse three, Abraham fell down on the ground. Abram fell face down on the ground. Then God said to him, this is my covenant with you. I will make you the father of a multitude of nations. Verse five, what's more, I'm changing your name. It will no longer be Abram. Instead, you will be called Abraham for you will be the father of many nations. Now, let me tell you the work, some of the work that has to be done. So Abram, your name is Abraham. So now Abraham has to first accept that he has a new name. Have you accepted that you have a new name, that in Christ you are a new creature, that old things are passed away and all things have become new? Have you accepted that? That's number one. Number two, are you willing to express that? Because now Abram has to go back and tell all his workers, all his friends, all his family, his wife, he's got to tell everybody, I know y'all been calling me Abram, but I got a new name. My name's Abraham. Who named, Who renamed you God? Are you serious? Absolutely. Y'all got to remember, y'all, Abram didn't go to church. Won't no church. Church is New Testament. They had temple. They had worship, but it was no church like we have it. There was no apostle Paul. This is Abram. This old school. So he he didn't have a church to go to. He didn't he he didn't even ha he didn't even have the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost came upon him, but didn't come in him. So he wasn't speaking in tongues and none of that, none of that. He won't do none of that. He just heard from God, and he had so much faith that he was willing to say, you know what? I'm ninety. Listen, y'all. He was 99, 99 years old, and God tells you. 99 years old and God tells you you're going to have a child? Uh-uh. Okay, not only are you going to have a child, you're going to be the father of many nations. God, I can't have one child. And so this is what God does. God says, listen, I don't need you to believe me for, for, for nations. I'm going to give you nations. That's my promise to you. You don't have to believe me uh, for the abundance. That's my promise to you. All you have to do is trust me with one. Trust me with the seed. Trust me with the beginning. Trust me with the activation. Just trust me with that. Don't worry about me giving you many nations. Just trust me for an Isaac. And by the way, not only does he change Abram's name to Abraham, he changes his wife's name from Sarai to Sarah, S-A-R-A-I to S-A-R-A-H. Why? Because in order for you to enjoy your new nature, you got to speak that thing. So you got to understand your new name, because the, according to Hebrews chapter 11, verse three, the world is framed with words. So your world is framed with your words. Your world is framed with your words. So stop speaking negative over yourself. Stop allowing people to speak negative over yourself. Stop agreeing negative things. Stop agreeing with it. You don't have to agree with it. Your words are too powerful for you to keep coming into agreement with, with things, with words that are beneath you. You are not sick. You are not broke. You are not frustrated. You are not down. You are full of faith and you are full of power and you are full of the kingdom of God. And so this is why we release our faith. And I want to challenge you even now to release your faith this morning. I want to challenge you to, to, to release your faith this morning. You know why? Because when you release your faith, you are releasing the power of God, the kingdom of God to be activated in your life. So you need a point of contact. 
I'm not hearing me this morning. I said, you need a point of contact. I'm going to read Hebrews 11, 3 for you, and then, and then we're going to move on. I just want you to see this. It says, by faith, we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command, that what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. That what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. Watch this. So you take your seed, you put it in the ground, and you expect it to produce what you can't see. Listen, I'm going to challenge you this morning to sow into that word even now. I feel that thing so heavy. I want you to get a I want you to get a $17 seed. I want you to release your faith. This is not about the amount. That's not what this is. This ain't because I need it. This because we need to release our faith. I, I hear that so strongly. So I want you to release your faith this morning. Release your faith this morning. Why do I have to? Why does? Why do I release my faith with money? The the fact that we even, the fact that we even ch- are challenged by that and are asked by that is we need to do it. And and I mean this sincerely. I want you to sow a. A Genesis 17 seat this morning. So a $17 seat this morning. If you don't have $17, I want you to sow a $1 seat or a $7 seat. I want you to sow into this word this morning. And the reason why is because I want you to have a point of contact. I want you to release your faith this morning. Two ways you can do it. I'm going to pray, but I feel this thing so heavy. I, I want you to go to cash app is dollar sign CL Hines M I N dollar sign CL Hines in my end, or you can go to clhines.org backslash giving. You can give it either one of those two ways, either one of those two ways. And I'm not, I'm not trying to hound you and all of that, but I just feel this thing so heavy this morning and I feel it. And let me just tell you this because seeds and sowing is just as powerful as praying. As a matter of fact, Financially, sowing is just the same as praying because God honors our seed the same way he honors our prayer. And you said, well, I got big things that I'm believing God for. Well, if you if you are hearing if if the Holy Spirit is ministering to you to give more than the seventeen dollar seed, I want you to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. I just heard the Lord say so into this word. So into this Genesis 17, so into your new name. What is your new name? What is your new name? And so accordingly. Some of you making only so a dollar. That's fine. This ain't about the amount. This is about your obedience. Some of you can only sow seven dollars. That's fine. But some of you can, many of you should and could and will sow the seventeen dollars. I want you to do it even now, because when I pray today, I want to pray a specific prayer that this new name will be activated in your life. No gimmicks, no games, no foolishness. Thank you, Holy Spirit. No, no gimmicks, no games, no foolishness. Somebody ought to type that in. No gimmicks, no games, no foolishness. And by all means, if, if you feel pressure and you, you don't want to do it or you don't feel led to do it, listen, it's all good. You don't have to do it. I just know when I hear from God and I, I just govern myself accordingly. I'm going to sow this. I'm going to sow my 17 in a few places today. In a few places today. Because because listen, even with my understanding of the kingdom, I'm growing to see that, listen, there's some parts of my name that I am not embracing. Y'all not hearing me. I, I, I'm going to do a teaching one day on just a father of many nations. Oh, that thing is so pregnant. Those four words are pregnant. He, he, he was telling Abraham, in your name, you are a father. Right now, you're a son, you're a father. In your name, you are of something. In your name, you have many. And in your name is nations. That thing is so pregnant today. I'm I'm here to declare to you that you have a new name. Your new name might be entrepreneur. Your new name might be homeowner. Your new name might be car owner, uh, car lot owner, neighborhood owner. Uh, Your new name might be doctor. I don't care what your age is. 
It's never too late. It's never too late. Somebody type that in. It's never too late. It's never too late. And share this video. Share it. Share it again. If you already shared it before, share it again. Somebody needs to hear this this morning. It is never too late. Abram was 99 years old. He was 99. Listen to me, y'all. He was 99 years old. And God told him, you're going to be the father of many nations. <clears throat> I'm going to show you how old he was. He was so old that when God stopped talking to Abram and said, let me, let me talk to Sarah. He said, Sarah, you're going to have a baby. Sarah laughed because she was saying to herself, all right, maybe Abram, but definitely not me. My biological clock has ticked on away. But faith is not limited by the physical. Faith can change your physical situation, but your physical situation should, cannot change your faith. So we are not moved by what we see because what we see can be changed by what we don't see. We speak from what we don't see. Speak those things that are not as though they were. Whew. I want you to get that seed in the, in the ground real quick. If you're sowing, I want you to type in, I'm sowing, I'm sowing, I'm sowing, I'm sowing, I'm sowing. I want to give you a few seconds to do it before I pray because I want to pray. I want to pray over you and I want to call your name out. I want to call your name out. If you're sowing this, if you're sowing this, I want to release my faith with your faith. And I want to declare in the atmosphere, I want the atmosphere to hear that you have a point of contact. Father, I thank you even now in the name of Jesus for Teresa Horton, who's sowing, who has released her faith this morning. In the name of Jesus, we decree and declare nothing missing and nothing lacking and nothing broken in their lives. In the name of Jesus, we release our faith for Tanisha this morning. We release our faith this morning. We release our faith, not just for them, but with them for their new name in you. In you, they have a new name, they have a new identity, a new Christ. So, we release our faith for Deborah this morning. New name, sowing, we're sowing into our new name this morning, Father. And we are being obedient to your word. And because we're being obedient to your word, we don't play any games this morning. Because we're being obedient to your word, we, de we demand the manifestation. And Father, we know that this is a small seed, but it's really not a small seed. It's a big to you because we are obeying your word this morning. And so we we are releasing our faith this morning. We are releasing our faith this morning that everything that belongs in our new name is coming to us. And everything that doesn't belong in our new name is leaving from us now. So our so our our sicknesses are leaving our name. Our sicknesses are leaving our name in the name of Jesus. Cancer is leaving. High blood pressure is leaving. We're, we're not just praying this morning. We're declaring this morning. We're declaring this morning. We're declaring the seed that Sister Gloria is sowing. We're declaring the seed that Sister Carter is sowing. We're commanding the blessing of the Lord. We're commanding it this morning. Nothing missing and nothing lacking and nothing broken. We are commanders. We're not beggars. The kingdom of God is within us. So we're covering our family this morning. Some of us are, are sowing for our family members this morning. Some of us have family members that are struggling with things and, 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 and we've been praying for them and believing God for them. But according to your word, Father, you told us, give and it shall be given back to us, pressed down, shaken together and running over. So we're not just talking this morning. We're activating. We're releasing our faith in an unusual way this morning. We're releasing our faith this morning. We release our faith for Sister Terry this morning. We release our faith for grace freedom this morning. We release our faith. We know that it's a matter of the heart and our, our de declaration this morning, Father, is we accept our nature in you. So we release our faith this morning in the name of Jesus. And we command the blessing of the Lord over every person who is watching and standing with us this morning. 
And Father, we thank you for unusual instructions. We thank you for, for moving on us in this life, even now, <clears throat> in an unusual way. And we are open to you. We are open to you. And even to those, to those who you are speaking to, to do something different, to do something more, Father. I pray even now that as they are operating in a, in a different level of maturity and growing in you and growing in the grace of sowing in you, Father, we declare the blessing of the Lord that maketh rich and add no sorrow over them now. Father, I thank you for this, this, this time that you have us in. That is, that is slowly but surely moving on out. We thank you for it. And Father, I decree and declare and command even now that the rest of our day, we will experience unusual, supernatural, miraculous activity. That we are governed and protected by the kingdom of God. So Father, we speak the unusual. We speak the unusual today. We come against all attacks of the enemy. We come against all strategy of the enemy. We declare the un unusual activity today. Things that are broken will be fixed. Things that are down are coming up. In the name of Jesus, we release the supernatural, unusual power of God over and in our hearts and our lives. And we decree it over our family people that have been struggling with anxiety, we declare peace over them even now in the name of Jesus. People that have been struggling with depression, we come against it right now. We, we declare healing in our minds, in our minds. The way we're wired, the way we are wired is changing. It is shifting. We, we, we were used to always thinking the worst and thinking negative. We come against it. We command, we command new minds. Let this mind be in us, which was also in Christ Jesus. We command that this morning. And Father, we take this opportunity to worship you and honor you for what we know you are doing and what you have done. And we receive it now in Jesus name. I want you to type in. I receive that. I receive that. I receive that. I receive that. I, receive that. I, uh, ooh, I feel such an unusual move of God today. Listen, y'all, expect the unusual today. Un expect the unusual today. Expect the unusual today. Don't go ahead and, and tap into your new nature, the nature of the kingdom of God that is in you. Tap into that today. Lord, I've been up here too long. I I'm going to let you go, but don't forget, go to www.clhines.org and get registered for Increase 2020 is absolutely free. Doesn't cost you a dime. It's going to be a powerful conference, a powerful time, last weekend in June. Also, don't, don't uh, forget, uh, those of you who are local, we want you to join us Sunday at 3 o'clock from 3 to 4. Come on out to the church. We're going to have, a, 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 I guess, a praise party. I was going to do one thing, and then my... My family has talked, has, has kind of talked me into uh, seeing it from a different perspective. So we're going to try to have a good time. You can come on out and receive your communion that we're going to take on June the 7th. This is for those of you who are local. Those of you who are not, maybe we'll try to get a phone out and stream a little bit of it. I'm working on trying to get a DJ so that we can just have a good time and just kind of enjoy each other, social distance staying in our car, staying near our cars, but we just want to see everyone. We want everybody to see each other. We love each and every one of you, praying for each and every one of you, believing for God's best for you. Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. Let's, let's release our faith around expecting the supernatural and unusual this weekend. Listen, y'all, there's no need in believing God and not believing God. With man, things are impossible. With God, all things are possible. I got some things that I'm releasing my faith for, and I'm not even talking about just, you know, tangible material things. I'm talking about healings and uh, people that are on my heart that I'm releasing my faith for this morning because I know God can do it and wants to do it. He just needs my obedience. And he needs my obedience, not because he actually needs my obedience to do it, but he needs me to show a sign of maturity that I can be trusted with him honoring my word in this way. 
And so I want to encourage you this morning. Eyes haven't seen and ears have not heard. Well, we love you. Remember, y'all live better. Love God, serve people. We're praying for you and we'll see you next time.